Theosis, or deification, was a foreign concept to me when I started my journey to orthodoxy 10 years ago. Though I was steeped in the Wesleyan understanding of sanctification, I was leery of this man becoming like God business. It was not until I started studying St. Maximus the Confessor in grad school that I began to truly appreciate the significance of deification in the life of a Christian. St. Maximus the Confessor lived from about 580 to 662. He was well educated and spent time in the imperial court. He eventually became a monk and took up his fight against the Monothelites. The Monothelites believed Jesus only had a divine will. St. Maximus argued that if Jesus was fully God and fully man, then he had to have two wills, a divine and a human one. This fight ultimately leads St. Maximus to losing his right hand and having his tongue cut out and being exiled. Though the monothelite controversy made him famous, his greatest contribution to the church may be his explanation of deification in the life of the Christian. St. Maximus understands deification to be the central purpose for humanity and the whole cosmos. He writes, God, full beyond all fullness, brought creatures into being not because he had need of anything, but so that they might participate in him in proportion to their capacity, and that he himself might rejoice in his works through seeing them joyful and even filled to overflowing with his inexhaustible gifts. In Norman Russell's book, The Doctrine of Deification in the Greek Patristic Tradition, he summarizes St. Maximus' understanding of deification like this. Deification is not simply another expression for salvation, the repair of damage done by sin. It is the final end of salvation, the attainment of the destiny originally intended for humankind that Adam had in his grasp and threw away. It may be anticipated in some degree in this life, but it reaches its fulfillment in the next in the fullest possible union with the incarnate word and involves not only man, but his whole world for deification in the end is the goal of the entire cosmos. Union with God is the purpose of humanity's creation. God created humanity in paradise to have communion with him by creating humanity bearing his image and likeness. Along with earlier church fathers, St. Maximus makes a distinction between image and likeness. The image refers to everything that sets man apart from other creatures. A rational mind, a conscience, free will, creativity, love, and a yearning for things that are good and absolute. Humanity being endowed with the image is to acquire the likeness of God, which is deification, to participate in the divine love of God. It was the likeness that was lost in paradise. And in the fall, the image became distorted and self-serving, making it impossible to reacquire the likeness. This called for the incarnation where humanity could commune with God as intended. This likeness, though, is not just a set of moral platitudes where humanity can improve itself. If that was the case, then the incarnation, crucifixion, resurrection, and ascension of Christ would not have been needed. Naturally, becoming a better person is important and must happen along the way, but is not the primary purpose of deification. The true union between God and man is. Deification is about reacquiring the divine love of God. To become like God is to love like God. To love God and neighbor the way that the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit love.